What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Miles Horror Podcast, the Queen Mary Sliders Takeover for the month of February and I think the beginning of March. I still haven't mapped it out yet. There's a lot going on. A week of podcasts, and I'm super excited to be talking to these very talented people. Uh, with me today, I have Creep and I have Mooch. How are you guys doing today? Doing, doing good. Pretty good. Doing good. That's awesome. Um, so, you know, I... I I have to say, first off, thank you so much for doing this. This is something I've been wanting to do for some time, getting diving into the Queen Mary scene. Um, I first attended in 2019. Love the event. You guys do an amazing job there, and I had a fun time, and I can't wait to go back. Um, can it be October already, please? Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so I want to say, first off, just thank you for being on the show, and thank you for setting this up. Uh, Creep, I know you were the one to set all this up, so I really appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> um, so let's just jump right into it. What made you guys want to get into scare acting? Um, I've been, well, first I've been scare acting for like 12 years total now. Um, and it kind of started when I was a kid in Scouts and we put on like a, a charity, like fundraiser, like haunted house for the, the Scouts in the area. Right. Um, for people to come and donate their money to and it was I had a fun time and it wasn't until like I was older and it was kind of just like needed a little extra cash and I applied to um, Dorney Park in Allentown Pennsylvania I'm from Pennsylvania um, they're Cedar Fair Park so they're connected to not so similar operations there right. um, and I you know got put in my maze there and had time of my life and just it's gone on from there moved to california and found dark harbor and found a home so that right there what about you mooch um so 2020 would have been my third year haunting um i got started in 2018 um my first like experience with like working like scare acting was um i think What's that convention? Midsummer Scream. Um, I got invited with a couple of other buddies of mine from the Sliders. Um, they were like, hey, do you want to work this the front of the maze for a good while? And I was like, yeah, sure. So did that for the day uh, or the weekend, actually. Um, and then first convention I went to was uh, Scare LA 2017. I saw Decay Brigade performing there. And um, I just kind of like fell in love with it, just watching what they do. And then that Halloween, immediately me and uh, Lone Star had um, planned out like this little maze in front of his house and we were just basically sliding in front of it. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I think the, uh, I always consider sliding an art. I mean, it is something that takes a lot of practice to accomplish and, and do. And it's something that I enjoy watching especially uh, at Queen Mary, I mentioned on the last podcast, they did, they do something that Knott's used to do that I'm glad I got to see at Queen Mary again, something I missed a lot, which was the, sli the slider show. Um, and that's really where I got to see you guys go all out and have a good time and, and really put it all out there. Um, I really enjoyed watching you guys be creative with some of the stuff you guys did. Uh, it's something that when I look at it, I'm like, yeah, I don't think I could do that. But, you know, that's why I have these guys right here to do it because, you know, it's, it, it's, it, I mean, it, you guys are great at it. I mean, you could always, always, if you have time and we can actually run boot camp, boot camp again, um, you could always come and give it a try one night. And just I know, see. I, I, you know what? Someone told me that too. Someone was like, you should, you should scare. And I'm like, I, I would love to do it for a season, but someone wouldn't be there to catch you guys on film all the great moments so uh, <laughs> but you know I, I i like i said i attended the event in 2019 for the first time and i i had a ball i i went i actually loved it so much i went back a second night um and just enjoyed myself it was something unique and different about this event that you don't see at other events um obviously with of course the queen mary having the history that it does uh you know the unique lore behind that and them connecting that into the the mazes and, and the scare zones and stuff, which I think is really cool. The overall theming of the event is amazing. Um, and I am a person who likes to drink. Not a lot, but I like to have a nice little, at least one drink. Uh, and 
you know, if you drink responsibly, like you should be at these events, um, it, it's cool to have a beer or whatever it is and just watch you work. I had the opportunity to watch you guys off the VIP lounge uh, with my with my Jack and Coke, just just watching you guys work, and it was so cool <laughs> just to see it from that view. So you, I have to say, you guys are some talented motherfuckers, and I think it's you guys are badass. So. You. you guys are <laughs> legit. Like if Sammy, my co-host, was here, sadly he's working overtime like all this week. But um, if he was here, he would say you guys are the reason why we return to these events every year. Uh, the personalities, everything. I mean, and I've seen some weird stuff at Dark Harbor that I don't see anywhere else that I think is just <laughs> unique and, and awesome. Uh, because I feel like you guys, it seems like to me, you guys have the freedom to do a lot, uh, a lot more of what you guys want to do compared to other events. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've seen it all. I've seen I, I stapled money to a person. I've never <laughs> seen that at any other haunt. Uh, I watched uh, one scare actor pull a lollipop out of his mouth and then give it to the other scare actor <laughs> in that person's mouth. And oh, I, we all we all yeah. do that. That's yeah. that, that one lollipop will get through the whole slider team at yeah, least once that, a night. So <laughs> that was uh, I'd never seen that in my life, and I was like, okay, I'm ready for tonight. It's gonna be a good night. Um, I've heard loud ass train horns walking through a scare zone that literally made me drop to the floor um, because I was not expecting it. Um, I, I, I've seen, and I've seen a lot of stuff going to these events, but I, nothing like dark Harbor, man, dark Harbor takes it up a whole new level. And I, and I think that's something that's unique about this event. And if anyone ever gets the opportunity to go out to this event, you definitely should. Um, let's talk about your characters. So what was the basic idea? How'd you guys come up with your characters? Um, well, in 2017, um, which was my first year on show team, um, they, the costume department was like, okay, you guys, we're really going full blown with the circus theme, um, clown circus characters. And, um, of course everyone, a lot of people like clowns, like being scary clowns. Um, but I just kind of wanted to be a little different right. and I went with a, uh, animal tamer, um, who died through the <laughs> for, because of his animals um right. my story uh revolves around like somebody letting my animals out and they maul and, like i tried to stop them and they maul me and i die <laughs> brutal i love it um <laughs> so um and then it over since then since that year my characters kind of evolved a little bit story-wise and look-wise um so basically um now he, he is he's still a, an animal tamer but now he's kind of embraced the spirit of the beast inside of him so he's got claws and fangs now and uh right. you know to and like extra fur on his costume you know to show like more animal animalistic things about him so you're definitely one character i'm gonna have to pay attention to the next time i go because i <laughs> I, I, I love the attention to detail with that. I think that's really cool, especially with street positions. You get to be really creative of how you create your character. So stuff you're telling me all that stuff and I'm just like, oh man, like you got my you caught my interest. So definitely gonna look forward to that when, when Dark Harbor returns. Mooch, what about you? What's the idea behind your character? So I used to have a fear of like heavy storms and everything. Um so that was already kind of like, like I wanted to do something to where it was like, like a fear of mine is going to benefit me in something else. Right. Um, and so I thought about it for a little bit and then I tried to go with some other ideas and they just weren't really sticking. Right. Um, I couldn't really come out with like a clear picture of a character for it. And then Hunter uh, or Looney um, had, throw it, had thrown out the idea of being an electrician. So right away I took that and just, kind of like molded it here and there. Um, the Basically the backstory behind my character was I was fixing one of the lights that hang above the, uh, the smokestacks and I had been struck by lightning, fallen down, um, basically taken in by the other clowns there um, and just kind of been made one of their own. I'm sensing some ride the lightning there. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh that's awesome that man. album that album definitely has a huge impact oh dude i i'm a i i love metallica it's probably my favorite metal band of all time 
Um, yeah. But that's that's cool, dude. I, I I like that kind of idea of how you kind of were just an electrician and then the clowns took you in. I, th- I think that's really cool. Um, that's dope. One of my favorite things hearing from scare actors uh, is guest reactions. Um, I've heard a lot of funny ones out there. I've heard a lot of interesting ones out there. What are some of your favorite guest reactions that you guys ever had going out on the streets? Um, my favorite always is um i like to gross people out um i carry like fake cockroaches around oh, um, you already grossed me out man i'm so terrified <laughs> of cockroaches and and i put them in my mouth and i like spit them out at people or i take them or i just stick my tongue out and let it rest on there and they see like oh there's a bug on his Wait. tongue or there's a cockroach on his tongue and i will like offer it to people like i'll take it out and i'll be like chasing them with it and then like they're just it's the fear of the bugs and then just the that, gross spit. That was you? <laughs> like, I expect... I've seen you then. <laughs> yeah, that's that's me. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. <laughs> I, 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 like, try to play it cool. Like, uh, you know, this doesn't bother me, but inside it really bothers me. I'm like, oh, I hate cockroaches. Don't come yeah. here. <laughs> but, no, I, I actually saw that in 2019. Yeah, that's – I've been doing that for a little while, a couple years now. Really um trooper. <laughs> and then – in 2019, actually, I just had like one of my favorite and best of reactions of all was I was just walking past where the the elote stand was, right. um, past where like the gift stand is, and I just hear people behind me, and I just turned around and like did like a roar or something, I don't know, and they the one girl in the middle holding a nice giant freshly purchased cup of corn just falls backwards cup of corn goes up in the air spills over her she's knocking over her friends it was like and i i was just like that was like the best reaction with like the minimal effort that i've ever had and i loved it like i it's my favorite from like you're like yeah hey, so you far. wasted your 14 dollars, not me <laughs> yeah <laughs> i literally had to go like run behind like and hide real quick just because i need to like seriously laugh that one out that's, I was just like, <laughs> oh my god i mean yeah i i've seen like i've seen the beer spill i've seen the 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 um funnel cake spill i've never seen the corn one though that's that's a new yeah, one, that, one was, that was fun yeah what about you <laughs> mooch what's one of your some of your favorites um so the beer spilling is always like a fan favorite of ours right. um we even try to like play a game here and there, but we Another won't get into that. $10 down the drain on them, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but like their reaction of thinking that they're safe coming out of something is like, it's always kind of funnier when, when you get them like right after. Yeah. Um, so what I would do sometimes is I would be hanging out over in the brick area just before main gate. Um, and I would hang up on this light pole and I would just like kind of stand there and the exit of, um, intrepid was coming out of there back to the main gate um and so as they were coming out they would just keep walking and he- start heading the gate but as i was on this light pole they would just kind of walk in front of me and i would just like for instance there was this girl walking she didn't see me i was just up there like hanging out not really moving or anything she's walking i just stick my foot like in front of her face maybe like about a foot away or half a foot away and immediately just like falls straight back, just collapses on the floor. And oh, man. She's like, what the hell was that? And just <laughs> all confused and everything. And she eventually saw me. But The foot one is always the best. I was actually told to ask you, how did you fall off the light pole in 2019? I was going to bring oh, that up my myself. God. <laughs> I was told to ask that by an unnamed source, but, you know. Oh, my gosh. Um. So to get on the light pole, I have to like grab onto it. There's a, like a cylinder or not cylinder, but a block of like concrete at the base. Right. I took a step on it. For some reason, it was like wet that day. And so as I took the step and I'm like pulling myself forward, my foot slips off and I just kind of let go and fall <laughs> all the way back. 
<laughs> I hope you're all right, by the way. I hope everything was oh, good. Oh, yeah, I was, I, I, was, I was totally fine. Don't, don't worry. I'm <laughs> totally okay. Uh, yeah, I was, I was told to ask that. I, I, had, I, was, I had to make sure I had to ask that. Uh, <laughs> but I won't say who told me to ask it, but I was told to ask I, it. I, I knew it was coming anyway. That's, that's an infamous story. If it wasn't me, I think Creep was going to ask it. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was like, hey, why don't you talk about that? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, like I said, this is like compared to like uh, the, the big haunts, like ha you know, other big haunts like Horror Nights and and Knots, where Horror Nights they're kind of just they're supposed to just kind of play one character throughout the night, and with Knots, you know, they have more freedom to do based around the character, based around the theming. I think with Queen Mary Dark Harbor, I really like the fact that you guys, like I said, have the freedom to do what you guys want. You know, as long as everybody's safe and everything, of course. But um, you yeah. guys, I mean, I've heard already heard some pretty gnarly stories with this event, and I think it's cool. I, another thing that I like that uh, they incorporate with you guys as well is um, they give you guys the hidden tokens, man. And you guys pretty much, I've heard some pretty gnarly stories with those, man. What are some of the, the funniest things you had people do for a token? Um, Jeez. I never mm, really. I, I usually try to avoid the tokens. Being given the tokens, I don't. I don't like. Yeah, I don't want people near me. I don't man. want people don't want... seeking me out. I don't want people seeking me out. I want to seek them out. That's... Yeah, that's good. That's a good, good strategy right there. No, that's perfect. What about you, Mooch? You get tokens and you just have uh, people do some some funny stuff. I usually like if it's a short person, I would. Like if I was on the light pole, I would try to make them like I would stick my hand up Aww. and just have them try to like jump for it. Um, I've had people try to tell me a joke and they usually just say like my life and I just like get out of here. Depending, I just tell them to walk depending away. how big that light post is, I'm six foot six, so I can. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, no problem. <laughs> yeah, there's been there's been quite a, a a range of things that I know that the team has and asked people to do for tokens and I know some of them have got in trouble or been told to hey don't do that anymore because yeah. of um the guests complaining or something but those, those, I mean I know that's one thing that <laughs> I usually avoid them even as a guest like that was one thing I was constantly on the look for I was like oh where do I where do I get tokens like who's got tokens like not even just to get into the bars but they're just cool collector's items um and I was just like yeah. I just want to collect them like I don't care if I get into the bar or not I just want to I just want them they're cool um but obviously, uh, you know, like one of my favorite things seeing uh, I used to do at, at Knott's in 2019 was just people watch. Um, I would sit on a bench and just watch everyone work. I'd, I've seen so many different styles and, and so many different ways of people scaring. I think it's uh, interesting. What are some of your favorite like styles that you like using out in the, uh, the streets? I know you mentioned the cockroach being one of them, which is Ugh, just thinking about that, I just—I'm right, getting shivers just thinking about that. Are there, are there any other techniques you like using out there just to to get good scares? Um, mostly it's just I do a lot of the stare down. Oh. Um, and just uh, I just like unnerving people. I don't necessarily like ne go for scares. Right. Um, because everybody is scaring. Um, right. I kind of give a little bit of a different experience. I mean, obviously. You know, I'll I'll do like you know some big ones here and there, especially when you know I'm coming out of the shadows from somewhere. I find places to hide sometimes, and right. I'll just zoom right out and <laughs> you know get a good get some good ones. But most of the time, I'm just, just the creeper in the, the corner. Creeper, you know, right. <laughs> like <laughs> the name says it all right there for your character, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what, what about you, Mooch? What's some of your things um, that you like using out there? So, as Creep was saying, like, small little kitty corners just in the dark, can't really see what's behind the other corner or whatever. Right. Um, slowly, like, following people for a good while. Right. That's that's always really funny because they, they just they have a tendency to keep looking back every five <laughs> minutes. And then, and then you go down one way, and then you look at them, and they look back that way, and you wrap around them. And then just... It's, it's always just the... It's, the the Simple eyesight stuff. and everything yeah just the the you, when you think you're going one place you come back and boom i love that's one yeah. of my favorites man one of my favorites yeah. there's uh, one that i've i've seen a, a couple of our team do i think moosh has probably done it a couple of times i know cavities has done it um well it will just stare off or like point at something 
as like a guest is walking up and they'll like stop and like go to look and then they'll like turn around and scare them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the old, the old fake roo just like, hey, look right, at yeah, that. exactly. I love, I love watching that happen. <laughs> yeah, because you know, uh, I'll be honest. Yeah, like, it's like, yeah, you be like, what, you, what, what, what exactly? You turn around, and talk to them, and then boom, it's like, oh, okay, I, yeah, yeah, I got you, got me. Um, I yeah, I I personally I, I have to talk a little bit about the history of the ship because. Uh, Queen Mary in general just always is something special to me. Uh, like I said on the last podcast, my great grandfather, uh, who was in World War II, came back on that ship. So every time I go to that ship, I, I always just have like that personal connection with it. But of course, with the boat's history being haunted, have you guys seen anything working on the ship? You've seen any ghosts? You've seen any creepy stuff? I mean, I haven't seen anything, but I've experienced a lot. <laughs> oh man. I've been I've been uh, scare acting at Dark Harbor since 2012, so right. that's given me plenty of times to get get a good uh, spook in there. Um, oh, that there's that... just I have so many. Like I could have a whole podcast show just of that. What? Like... <laughs> I, I, I want to just hear one. What's one of the scariest encounters you've had? Um, the one reason I won't go in the boiler room uh, <laughs> anymore. Uh, it was actually my first year at Dark Harbor, so 2012, and it was before gates were opening. People are like still getting into costume, makeup, hanging out in the break areas. And right. at the time, I was my break area was on the ship, and um, there was a door that we could go through, and it would like basically you'd go through and you'd end up in the boiler room. Um, yeah, and. Um, so we went in there and we were just like exploring, you know, just went in and we're like, oh shit, the boiler room. And we're like looking around. There's like a railing from like the tours um, on there because like, there's right. like a platform right. in the railing. Yeah. So we go up to the railing, we're looking around, got our like phone flashlights out, just like looking at all the dark corners and stuff and like listening for spooky sounds. And I'm kind of like in my own spot and like there's at least a good like foot or so between me and the next person on either side. And I'm just looking there, hands on the railing, and I just feel like something like right in the between my shoulders, like on my back, just starts pushing me oh. over. And I'm just like, nope, I'm out. I've never been back. <laughs> I don't blame you, man. That's a near death experience right there. Oh, man. What yeah. about you, Mooch? You seen anything scary on that ship? So there was at one point, we stayed with a couple of our other buddies on the ship. Uh, we weren't too far from B340. I think we were like on the other side, like the other side of the ship. Um, but like that same floor, um, we were like staying there. And then for some reason, like it just, it started getting like, if we stood up, it was like maybe like 80 plus degrees. As soon as we like laid down on the floor, it was a good like 60, maybe. Oh, it was just freezing cold or extremely hot. Um, it must have been like 2 a.m. And then we just, we hear this like really, really loud scream like out of nowhere. And then we just like look like, it almost was like outside of our door. Right. So as soon as we open the door, we look and it, there's just nothing there. So we're just kind of like shocked. And then we just slowly close the door and <laughs> just try to sleep. But most of us couldn't after that, and then I, I just, I don't know, man. I, 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 always, I'm fascinated with the paranormal. So I, yeah, I, I've never, I, I've, I've encountered like one thing, but I've always wanted to like see something. Like then I'll yeah. be like a for sure, a hundred percent believer. I'm about a ninety percent believer right now. But until I see something, that will be my full hundred percent. But. Yeah, I mean, I've I've heard stories about this ship. I, you know, you see stuff on TV. There's been famous, you know, ghost shows that that's gone there, and you, you know, you read up on the history and everything. So I, I'm just fascinated when I when I get to meet people like you who have stories about this. And like you said, creep, you probably can talk a whole podcast about just <laughs> just the in, encounters you have. Uh, yeah, I might have to take you up on that in the future. Then, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> just it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, Miles Hard Podcast Ghost Stories Edition. Just bring everybody <laughs> on; that'd be fun. Um, so you know this this event uh, it's it's been it just hit its uh, 2019 was its tenth tenth year. 
Um, yeah. That's a big milestone for them. Uh, Ten years strong. Um, obviously, we 2020 didn't give us an 11th year. Uh, so thanks, 2020. Appreciate that. <laughs> um, I want to know, I mean, obviously 2020 was a hard haunt season, but did you guys still find a way to get around it and kind of still have a little fun out there during Halloween time? Yeah, I, we as a team did um, a, f- a couple food truck events. Right. Um, and have uh, since then too, um, we where we scare around the food truck event um, safely, masked right. of course and everything. Um, we did that in October and then we did a Christmas one mm-hmm. and we're doing a Valentine's Day one coming up on the 9th of February. Um, so I know that's one thing that we've done to at least kind of still scare. Um, right. I think a few people, um, I think Mooch, you worked at Haunted Car Wash. Oh yeah. Um, that was a fun event. I want to say like maybe a week before Halloween is when I did. Um, I forget where you said, did you say you went to it? I did. I don't remember what date it was. But I went. I think it was probably. I couldn't. I think it might have been the week before Halloween, honestly. Okay. Um, I I can't remember what day I worked, but I definitely worked it one day. Super right. fun. Um, run by uh, I think a couple of Knots people. Um, yeah. they had relations with the car wash, I guess. Um, but they were really welcoming and just had a super fun time. It it really was a you know what and you don't think a car wash would work as a haunt experience and it did like you're getting two things out of it one you're getting scared which a lot of people live for during halloween and you're getting your car washed it works like (laughs) i mean i'm not used to getting my car washed at night but you know it still works i'm down with it um but no they did some insane stuff at that thing i mean i got to go and just watching them work on that too was was nuts um that was definitely something um Earlier today, I actually put on Instagram some uh, fans if they wanted to ask some questions for you guys, uh, and we got a couple here. Uh, first one comes from Bronx, Bronx fifteen. Asks, <laughs> <laughs> what makes you uh, What makes you come back year after year to Dark Harbor? It's basically like since I started there, it's the management and the event as a whole has felt just so welcoming and it's just very, I don't know, like homey. I don't know how else to say it other than it feels like a home, like, right. like a home away from home. Uh, and I, I, there's nothing really that like makes me not want to be there um, and be with, you know, my fellow monsters there. Um, it's just, I know everyone says it's like a family, um, but it, it actually does feel like a family, especially especially our slider team. It's we've we're a very close knit group, and without them, I think a lot of us would probably be a little lost. So I know I see you guys on social media. You guys are very close, uh, you know, from hangouts. Yeah. I mean, pre pandemic and all that, and even during the pandemic, you guys find safe ways to still, you know, keep in touch with everyone, which is awesome. Definitely, yeah. I think I really like that. You know, just just hearing that, you know, I mean, and I could speak on a guest point of view, um, as far as these events, why we keep coming back every year. It's because we're surrounded with the haunt community, people who equally love these events and want to show their love and support for people like you who go on every year and put it all on the line to get one of the greatest goddamn shows in the world. Um, (laughs) and we, I can, I'm going to speak for the Knights of Horror personally. I want to thank each and every one of you for doing that because I think without you guys, these things would, I know for a fact without you guys, these things would not exist the way they do. So thank you. you Much sir. appreciated. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, <shucks. laughs> uh, Mooch, what makes you want to come back year after year, man? Uh, easily the memories, every single memory, good and bad has just been like implanted in my mind. There's, you you just can't replace the second home like family like friends like you don't you don't even call people friends there it's it's either your brother or your sister yep. or every now and then mom and dad 
yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, just hearing you guys, I mean, and I heard, like, when we did the last podcast, it was the same answer. It was just the fact that other people, the family, you know, and I could tell how close you guys are. And I think when groups like this are this close, it makes for better, a uh, better team and a better, stronger uh, scare factor. And you guys bring it every single year, 110%. And... I'd also want to say that, like, the freedom that we have, because yeah. obviously you see at other haunts, like Horror Nights and at Knots, like, they do have boundaries that are a lot tighter than ours, right. <laughs> um, where, you know, lines that they can't cross, but we can. And I think with as far as like especially with us on the streets like with character development and like really really giving that like one-on-one -on -one time with guests you know to really like show who our characters are and like who we are um right. really makes that special to me and uh, to a lot of us yeah no i i agree 100 percent on that because uh me personally i love it when uh i go to a haunt and the characters interact with the, the guest, I think it really makes for not only a memorable experience, but it makes you want to come back more and more every year because you know you're going to get those experiences and you know that, hey, you know, last year I had a fun-ass time here and I guarantee I'll probably have another fun-ass time this year, so let's <laughs> let's go back, you know? Like, when when a haunt goes out of their way, when when you guys as scare actors go out of your way to, to really interact with the guest, uh, whether it be funny scary however you want to do it i think it's just the interaction for me I i'm a sucker for that so i am will always i will act like a kid in a candy shop when that happens really <laughs> I, I i really lose my shit with that kind of stuff um one person i shouted out last podcast that i want to give another shout out again this podcast because i think it's because of him that we kind of bridge this uh whole uh thing to get it going to uh, as well as creep uh helping set all this up as well is uh scott Diderman. Um, yeah, the guy is uh, such a nice person. I remember the first time I ever met him was at Haunt X in 2019, uh, and he actually met up with us and wanted to do a show with us and liked the stuff we were doing. And you know, uh, he's a, just a fucking nice person. Uh, fucking, and I'm gonna say it again. And he's probably gonna get mad at me for saying it. He's a fucking legend. Like he really is. <laughs> like he's a fucking legend. We're, we are very lucky and uh to have him as our our mentor and and when it's actually haunt season at dark harbor our our manager right. um uh just to have his help and his tips and his just his expertise just at our disposal is just amazing so right now he is a he he, he goes back to like uh, like the start of fucking sliding man like he was there for yeah. it man and just it's yeah. like I, I don't know if you guys I, I i love this movie lords of dogtown start of skateboarding right there he is like fucking dogtown right there he's like tony <laughs> alva and all that you know he's like the he's like the ogs man so no he's such a nice guy and he's i'm gonna keep doing it every fucking episode i have this the, the sliders on man we're gonna <laughs> shout him out because that guy is a fucking legend um, and I, can't I could just, I could just kind of hear him in the background, just going, "This fucking guy." He's like, this guy, man. I don't know why he did this, man. Shit, I gotta talk to him now. Uh, no, he, he's, he's like, really cool, him. really cool guy. Love him. Um, and I yeah. can't wait to get him on my podcast again. Uh, he's actually, he's the one that's pushing me to start doing live podcasts now. Uh, and mm. I'm like, yeah, it's a good idea, you know. I mean, live show might be fun. Um, maybe. And here's an idea I'm gonna throw out right now. After this is all over. Let's get all the sliders. Let's get all – and then Scott, let's do a live show. <laughs> don't matter right. how chaotic it gets, it's going to be fun. That's the that's the fun part of it. I don't care if it's I'm 45 for minutes or three hours and 45 minutes. It'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, let's talk about prepping to get out there. Uh, I, I know a lot of people do a lot of different things to get in the mood. I can already know – I already know what probably Mooch does. Um, yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, but I want to hear, guys. What is, what is something that helps you get set into the mood every night? Listen to music, read a book, sit in silence. What do you guys do? Um, Maybe you want to go first? Yeah, sure. I'll go first. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I usually have a playlist that I have just specifically for my character. I listen it to it on my drive down. Um, that's usually when I have like the most like alone time. Right. Um, um and i you know i obviously add on to it like every time i find a new song like oh this fits you know i can use that you know um it's mostly that and then after after i uh 
get in there and I clock in and I start getting in a like the makeup chair and I walk out of makeup I'm I already feel like I'm there like it's just having the makeup and the costume on is like really what like really gets me into the character right. the music just kind of helps set the mood um for that right what are, what are some of your go-to artists for that uh i have so it, it's a it's a wild mix like i don't even have like more like more than one song by the same artist it's just a crazy mix there's like um i mean obviously creep by radiohead is like that's, on there that's it um, right there like what else <laughs> like, that song you can't have there, you can't have you can't have a, a character named creep without having that on his playlist <laughs> um uh there's just so many like i have and like some like really obscure things too that i just found on spotify like i don't even know who these people are does it but... jump from genre from like metal to like rock to like rap to like dubstep um i don't really have a lot of i don't think i really have rap i'm not like I respect rap, but I don't really listen to it too much. I feel um, you. I'm the same boat. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but it's mostly like there's a lot of like metal and like rock, and then there's kind of like a little bit of dubstep, but like also kind of like I don't know how to describe it. It's not. It's like some. I don't even know what genre it is, but it's like some kind of like alternative like genre that's like. It's out there. That's all it is. It's <laughs> out there, yeah. Out there. Like, <laughs> you already got you already got the respect of the metal. It's, it's a little bit electronic, but like I don't know if that's what I would use to describe it, you know. But <laughs> nah, that sounds like a dope <laughs> playlist right there. Mooch, what are you listening to, brother? I know you listen to a lot of the same uh, shit I do. Yeah. Um definitely an eighties metalhead dude. Um big four, no doubt. Um Oof. not too much anthrax, but definitely the big four. Um, so Metallica, Slayer, Megadeth, um, nothing really too much else, Black Sabbath here and there, um, that usually, um, Ride the Lightning, for sure. That's the mountain right there, huh? Yeah, that's, it's just almost on repeat a lot. <laughs> that's a good album. That's a solid album. Um, I'm between that and then, uh, Kill Em All, dude. Those are my two favorites. Oh, Master, yeah. Master, dude. Master. Those first three are just solid. Yeah. Cliff era. <laughs> yeah, the Cliff era. I do. I love Cliff. Rest in peace, Cliff. Yeah. One of the greatest goddamn bassists to ever hit this planet. <laughs> um. So as soon as, like, I set everything down, uh, I like to hang out for a little bit. Um. But as soon as, like, maybe like 10 minutes before makeup, I throw in the headphones, go down, go down to makeup, get it done. Um, as soon as I'm out, I throw the headphones back on and 10 minutes before we walk out, that's when I'll take everything off or not everything, just the headphones. Um, and I'll put everything away. Um, I'll walk out, get a few slides in, warm up. Um, just that's pretty much it um maybe like two minutes before opening i'll just like i'll kneel and just like close my eyes for like a good 10 15 seconds pray to the haunt <laughs> gods <laughs> yeah. yeah definitely uh, uh one, one thing that i like you what you guys do at this event uh in the very beginning of it is i like when the captain is announcing everything and the ringmaster and you guys are just banging on the gate. I think that is so badass. Like as a guest, you don't know how excited I get just walking into that. Like you're you're in your head, you're like, oh shit, like what did I sign up for? But at the same time, you're like, oh fuck, this is gonna be fun. Like they're hyped, I'm hyped, like let's do this. I know it's it's definitely a thing that I know that catches a lot of people off guard because they're saying, Oh, they're they're back in their mazes. They're waiting for us back yeah. there. But no, we're right at the gates, ready yeah. to like get Every single one on the get go. <laughs> yeah. And I can just say, like, I definitely prefer how we open the gates now than how we used to. <laughs> right. With the monster run. Uh, That's so. I hated sad. the monster run. Uh, the monster <laughs> run. We would all, led by the, the the sliders, we would just go out, sneak out a back gate or a side gate and sneak out around the like main like entrance queue right 
and then we just like run and like run like at the people still in the queue like they're not even up at the gate yet they're oh. like haven't even had their ticket scanned or whatever right. but we'd like fawn like run up to them like shake the barricades and like get up in their faces and then they just run back again it was fun but like it was, it was always so tiring right. and i was like i'm not ready for the night now like i just did my scaring <laughs> i'm ready to go home like <laughs> <laughs> you're like i'm ready to take um, a nice warm shower and just yeah like out. i'm like all right i need at least a good like 30 minute lunch now all right and then i'll get back <laughs> Uh, I, that's something that's very unique about this event that I think not a lot of events take advantage of of the hype level. I mean, that is something that I love when you hear that just the banging. You're just like, like I said, you're just in that like you're in that oh shit moment, but at the same time, you're like, I'm fucking ready for this. Like, it's so dope. Um, I think that in the coming years, there's there's always going to be new people coming in, um, and new monsters coming in to bring in new unique styles what is something that you have not seen yet that you want to see come into the to the to the stage of of this realm hmm. like something new something unique like something you haven't seen yet but you thought of and you're like oh man it'd be really cool to see this hmm. that's a really good question yeah. <laughs> um uh. I can't, I don't think I could necessarily name something. It'd have to be like one of those things or, you know, like we're that's at the rink or something it. and yeah. someone just does something that's just, you've never seen before. And you're like, I want, I want you to do that. <laughs> like us. every weekend, like, <laughs> turn our, you know, <laughs> like we can put that in the show or whatever, you know. Um, I think, I think we need like, I would like to see a lot more like ways to incorporate like more acrobatic things I think into our show. Yeah, interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, or maybe not acrobatic necessarily, but just like different kinds of movements that aren't necessarily sliding, you right, know, right. just to set things up or just, I don't know. <laughs> no, I agree. No, that'd be really cool. I mean, and not to mention you guys do an amazing job as it is already with the sliding show. <laughs> Um, that's one thing I actually look forward to every time I go to now that I, I've been to Dark Harbor twice because uh, I went twice in 2019 I was like I caught a glimpse of it when I because I went for the media night and then I loved it so much I came back I was like I'm buying a ticket and coming back like there's no way I'm not coming back to this event and then I caught the entire thing the second time I went because um, I wasn't too worried about going through the mazes like I had already went through everything so if like I missed one thing I wasn't going to cry or anything like I wanted to see the stuff that I missed and mostly it was the streets um, so I mostly was on the streets that night. It was just, I was blown away of what I saw. And I know there's definitely some like technical elements like that I would wish we could have, but like where our, our alley, uh, for our show is located, it might not work just because there's no place to put like the lights, the extra lights or whatever right. that right. might be needed. Um, Cause I have ideas in my head all the time um, of like, what, like, especially when I'm listening to a song, I'm like, Oh, that'd be cool for the show. But if it'd be really cool if we had this effect, but you know, right. they don't give us the lighting or we don't have the space for the lighting or whatever kind of prop we might need. Um, especially being on a Hill, a lot of props are very difficult to use. Yeah. Um, so that's just something like I wish, but probably won't happen unless we have a new, like, location for our show so i think something that would be really cool incorporated into that show would be like uh, I, i'm a huge fan of like those little laser lights you know what i'm talking about like that that kind of mm -hmm. shine like the little laser things it'd be really cool to like mess around with those you know what i mean <clears throat> Just to see if you can yeah. jump over like certain heights or like if they turn in circles and someone's spinning in circles or something like that'd be really cool <laughs> I, mean, I mean i i thought of um at one point like uh getting like light up shoes just to slide in oh, that would be dope. <laughs> but i was just, just like that would definitely be something very that, expensive and yeah. i didn't want to ruin a pair of expensive shoes so yeah that I would definitely be something i had never i would never have seen ever <laughs> um i'm pretty sure there's ways around that i think we can create something cheaper yeah that, that are meant to get ruined um but yeah guys i, I think it, it, it's an amazing thing what you guys do out there and i can't stress that enough um because I think a lot of people think this is sliding is something that's easy to do, and in reality, I don't. It takes time and and a lot. It's not as easy as people. I think people think you just put on pads and do it, when in reality, I think it's more to it than that. 
Yeah, um, it's definitely, I like to use, you know, the Buzz Lightyear quote, like we're falling with style. Yeah. Um, but it's a lot more complicated than that. Um, it, it takes a lot of, like, obviously anyone can like literally throw themselves at the ground and slide, right. but to be able to stop and do it safely and so that you're not like destroying your knees every slide, you yeah. know, that's something that takes practice and takes like a a mentor to let you know so i always found uh the last podcast they they said that uh this is something that's therapeutic to them you know scaring is something that's a, a, like a little therapeutic thing for them you guys feel the same way about that do you guys get like kind of it's like a little therapy for you like oh definitely <laughs> yeah get it all i work i <laughs> I've been working uh, in retail and food for a long time. So I know how people can be and you can't do anything at, on the job there. But when I when October comes, that's when I can do things. <laughs> uh, within limits, within limits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I've worked retail, so I know exactly how you feel. Exactly how you feel. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I was saying that I, I get the therapy of just getting scared, if that makes sense. I mean, I year-round... I'm trying to find the next big horror game, the next horror movie, horror TV show to last me until the next haunt season to get scared in person. Last night, I just played the Resident Evil 8 demo, and I, I was Oof. scared shitless uh, <laughs> because Resident Evil likes to put things in the game where you hear certain sounds or you hear something, and there's nothing there, but you're still paranoid if you turn around. Um, and I was just scared shitless playing that game. Like so, And that's that goes for any Resident Evil. I'm a huge Resident Evil fan, so... You know, just just playing those games, I'm just like on guard every time. I think I pulled an all nighter when Resident Evil Three Remastered came out. I I started at twelve <laughs> at night and I finished at six in the morning, and I was frustrated with Nemesis by the end of that game. Like I was just <laughs> pissed off. Like I fought this guy like fifty thousand times. This guy doesn't die. Um, but no, it, it's just something that I think a lot, and I think a lot of people in my in my place can say the same thing that a lot of people these this day and age love to get scared. It's it's literally a thing where people pay to get scared now, whether it be a movie in the theaters or at these haunt events. You know, uh, people even like to go to like places like Seventeenth Door where they step it up a notch. You know, and and it, it fascinates me that you know horror has taken a whole new light of things in the twenty first century than it did back in like the eighties and the nineties when it was just horror movies. You know, so to see it evolved to bigger and better things and to bring the horror to life at events such as dark Harbor knots, you know, universal six flags, all these events to me, it's just fascinating because you yeah. have a lot of people who come to these events who want to get scared. And you have people like you who want to work these events to scare, which I think is awesome. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just a fascinating world to me. I don't know. Sorry, I got a little scientific there, but I just no, no, you're good. <laughs> no, it's, cool. it's a very science. It's a very fascinating thing to me. Um, I got another question from Gabby here. She asked, uh, "Anything, uh, any advice you can give her for creating a, a haunt slash slider character?" I mean, what I usually do is I usually take something that's a part of myself. Um, and ex like expand it and right. make it like um, for 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 me and 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 the character of creep. Um, I'm a very like introverted person, and so I don't. I'm not usually like a very talkative person. Um, so I took that and I made creep actually a mostly silent character. I mean, I make noises and stuff, but I don't speak um usually um unless you know necessary um so i kind of take that and i take like oh i have a love for animals and for especially like cats and like the big cats lions and tigers and stuff take that and put that in there and like just facets of myself um i think i i put that into the character so that it's easy uh to be that character i think um right. i definitely pick something within yourself, your personality, your life, things you like or whatever, um, and pull, draw from there, see what you can create from that. Um, and then it helps you get into character, stay into character, because it's just an extension of yourself rather than 
that's something else. <laughs> love it. Uh, yeah, I love hearing advice. What about you, Mooch? What you got? I would probably say like, kind of like piggybacking off of what Creep said, um, pick something that you truly love doing. Just take the idea of it, somehow create something out of it or something you absolutely hate with a passion, something that you, I don't know how to say it, like just for to make it simple, something that you hate. So me, I went with something that, something that scares me like that like thunderstorms were like like uh uh like i'm not doing it today headphones are on music's full <laughs> blast like i'm not doing this today like i'm i'm staying under the covers that's it <laughs> um just i don't know try to figure either something you love or something you hate and just i'd say like if the, the something there. that you hate um don't necessarily like turn yourself into the thing you hate um, cause that can make it difficult, right. but if you can find a way to take the thing you hate and project it onto the guest and that way you can use your, the, your hatred of that thing, like to fuel your scares, I guess you could say, right. um, mm -hmm. like some people be like, you know, like I hate rats or something and you go around screaming at all the guests, like calling them rats and how much you hate them. And there you go. Like it could be the that'd be that'd be hilarious just hearing that i would probably die <laughs> but at the same time i'd be a little confused like what 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 is happening <laughs> uh, there's a rat <laughs> there's a rat <laughs> uh no that's that's great advice and, and you know we've heard a lot of people uh give a, advice you know these years at this time around but i've never really heard the whole you know pick what you fear i i think that's really good advice right there too um because i think a lot of people overcome their fears by doing stuff like that and um i think i mean really honestly that would be me like um not so much anymore but like before i was pretty scared of clowns um pretty badly um and then working dark harbor one year i was a, a backup uh scare actor so i would work lots of different roles and i actually ended up having to wear be a clown in circus the maze and I think that night kind of like really changed things like how I thought about them. And so now I'm only afraid of clowns. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because one of my favorite horror movies of all time is killer clowns from outer space. So, you know, I mean, if I were to see one of those clowns on the street, I think I'd be terrified, but at the same time yeah. I'd have the urge to want to <laughs> hug them. I don't know why. <laughs> um, I have two more uh, usually the hardest questions of the podcast. So I don't know if you guys are ready for this. Some people get it really sim simple. Some people actually take a little time to think about it. Let's we'll see how you two do. Uh, the okay. first question, if you can work any other haunt out there, where would it be and why? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's very few haunts that I've like really been exposed to and I've even visited. Um, so it, I mean, I guess everyone over here would probably be like knots. And I mean, of course, right. um, <laughs> uh, that's obviously on the list. Obviously, um, yeah. but if, like, you want, if you want a sliding ghost town right there, boom. Exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's like a dream uh, right. for any slider, I think. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. That's really hard. I, know, I think I'd actually, I think I'd want to scare Eastern State Penitentiary. Nice. that is one i've never heard <laughs> that that would at least take me back home to pennsylvania for a little bit so. nice what about you mooch what do you want to scare um for me? definitely knots for more of the nostalgia feel um i don't know it just kind of has that other like family vibe they're like a, a third family that's there right but you don't see as often because you're working somewhere else yeah. <laughs> extended um, family distant relatives yeah. that come over distant relatives holidays. yes <laughs> <laughs> um but i would also i'm kind of interested in six flags here and there okay um for fright fest um definitely when we went last year or not last year uh 2019 um it was my first time going it was it was so different but definitely like fun it was it's almost hard to explain it's like you have to go and experience it yourself right. um but it's just obviously everybody knows us so everybody was like super welcoming and just going all out when we were there they just 
they just loved us so that's again awesome. another distant family yeah, right there distant all the way out in ventura right there that's a good family right yeah. there man <laughs> yeah um, that is one event i have not been to yet and i gotta check that one out um definitely on my list of things to do um, i recommend <laughs> i was definitely gonna obviously go to dark harbor though before i went to you know yeah six flags dark harbor is right up the freaking freeway from me and ventura yeah. is kind of a drive but I will definitely make my way out to Ventura one of these years um, just to check it out and see what their haunts are like. Uh, very excited. I'm always open to new things to get scared different ways. Um, the last question, uh, what is your favorite horror movie? Uh, oh, this is pretty easy. Uh, the Shining. Oh, no, without classic. A, without a doubt. Without a doubt, The Shining. Classic. I would have to go with The Exorcist. It has a special place in my heart as being the first one that I've ever seen. So, I uh, I just saw what you call it do an Exorcist cosplay recently, Sam. Mm. Uh, scary. Oh movie. yeah. And that was at three in the morning, and I don't tend to like to look at that stuff at that kind of time. So I was like, <laughs> all right, I'll see that tomorrow. Uh, no, I, I love the Exorcist. Exorcist, Exorcist is probably <laughs> defined as the greatest horror movie of all time. Um, that movie did something that spawn generations of things to come um i think it also kind of shaped how i how i learned to scare or like how i scare right because it's not like in your face horror it's not like hack and slash it's just very unsettling yeah um some point psychological too. Like, yeah like it's yeah. just it's just out there and just different and i think being possessed is also like a uh I mean, it's become a much more like a horror movie trope now than it yeah. was then. But like, it was a real like people. I mean, I guess people are still scared of that. But like, back then when that came out, like oh, that was people were of. terrified yeah. of being possessed yeah. by demons. Like my uncle told me stories, man. He's like, I remember we went to go see that film, and then when we got out, there was like a similar building stairway thing, and we looked at it, and we were just <laughs> terrified. And I was like, eh, wait, I man. mean. <laughs> And, like, I know, like, you know, they say that, like, when that was, when they were showing that in theaters, they had, like, ambulances on standby and stuff, yeah. too. So it's, like, one of those things It's like, you don't see it, you don't hear of that happening with movies, even nowadays, too much. So yeah. it's, like. But then, like, like, going back to what I said, I think horror has evolutionized so much since then. There's so much, there's such a big fan base for that where, you know, you got a Marvel movie that comes out that makes, like, couple hundred million dollars but then that horror movie that's a lower budget will make the same amount because people just yeah. love horror um i think it's because there are so many ways to create fear right on a small budget yeah <laughs> um I mean, it I, doesn't I take much <laughs> yeah definitely i mean I, I think i was reading a statistic that like blumhouse made just as much money as the mcu did uh, and they were like a, a, a sh like all their movies are made like under ten million dollars, you know, and like that's nuts to me. And they either yeah. the thing about Blumhouse though, it's either a really good film or it's a really shitty film. There's no in between, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you could say the same thing about haunts too. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm ranging anywhere from big, big park haunts, uh, theme park haunts to like small home haunts. You, yeah, because I've been to like some freaking fantastic home haunts that oh, like. Yep. <laughs> yeah. you yeah. know which no. um, yeah definitely <laughs> and i've been to some bad you know ones that are a little you know maybe cringe or just yeah. maybe not as good like you could see where they could improve and then the same thing with the big theme parks too like you know like horror nights has like amazing scenery yeah. and uh, effects and i love that about them and then like you know there's just Obviously, you see ways different people, like different places, can improve, yeah. or even just like, blow your mind. It's that's exactly what Knotts is like to me. It's just a, it's a fucking Van Gogh art piece right there. I just walk in. It's just beautiful. Like the scenery's beautiful. Everything detailed. Um, same thing with Horror Nights. When they bring those movies to life and stuff, it's like you're walking into those movies. My only issue with Horror Nights is just let's fix those black walls. Yes, that is the biggest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It bothered me the most when they had The Shining and then the hedge maze. 
it was, I was like, such, why is there a black wall and a yeah, hedge maze? It was such yeah. a, I mean, that was it. That was such a, a you know a good maze, and then there was a, a couple black wall scenes. I'm just like, oh come on, you guys could have done better. I know. Uh, yeah. hey, I'll, I'll give Exorcist a pass though. Exorcist is a hard film to turn into a, a maze, so exactly. I'll give that one a pass. You know, that one is just it's in one room the entire film, so um, yeah, that one gets a pass. But I want to thank both of you for coming on the show today. It's been a pleasure. Uh, and you guys are welcome back anytime you want. Um, I'm hoping we get Dark Harbor back on its feet pretty soon because I, I want to go to a haunt. I just want to go through yeah. this. I want to get scared. I want to see sliders again. I want to smell <laughs> fog smoke. I want to smell – this is going to be a weird one. I want to smell chainsaw gas. <laughs> <laughs> it's the little stuff that I miss. Um, yeah. But, again, I want to thank uh, also Creep again for – setting all this up and for the rest of the week i'm gonna be recording podcasts that you'll see in the next coming weeks um and i'm super excited to dive deep into their characters uh them as people and overall just have a good time and talk about horror because that's what this podcast is all about um so thank you both for being on the the show and i hope you guys are staying safe you guys are hopefully staying sane as well because you know this is <laughs> sucks for all of us just doing um, the best. <laughs> doing the best. But, I mean, just do your best. That's yeah. all we can do. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you guys want to? You guys have social media? Do you guys want to plug in or anything? That you guys for your characters or anything? Oh, uh, I have my my character. I guess account is uh, creep mp4 on Instagram. Um, I also have uh, YouTube and Twitch, but I don't, I'm not really that, that active on there. But. Uh, <laughs> All right, check out Creep on Instagram right there. Mooch, you got a you got an account? Uh, yeah, character account. Um, at QM Sliders underscore Mooch, spelled M O O C H. There it is. Follow them, see what they're up to, because I know you guys are doing some stuff even outside of Dark Harbor with the whole the food truck get together. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Do you guys are still sticking together and then meeting up and stuff? That's really cool. Um, I'm gonna try my best to make it out there February 9th. Get off work, go straight down to Cyprus. Uh, it's for an amazing cause too. Uh, I had heard it's that. It's good food. It's at the very least good food. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I had heard a lot of the donations are going to be going to the one of the food vendors who just passed away recently from COVID. Yeah. So yes. definitely a great cause. Um, so I'm gonna try my best to get out there. I get off work at six and I can just zoom straight out there for a couple hours and have some. Oh yeah. And yep. <clears throat> see you guys too. That'd be that'd be really fun. Uh, definitely. Yeah. That'd be cool. But thank you guys so much. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button with the bell notification beware every time we put up a new video. Hit that like button and leave some comments down for Mooch and Creep. Tell them show your love and support. Um, with that being said, I'm Anthony, host of the Mindless Horror Podcast, and we will see you guys next week for another Queen Mary Slider Takeover.